Hey guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and we have just been sent some crazy new lights that claim to be able to take product shots and create masks automatically for you. Let's check it out. Now you've probably seen that we just released a tutorial with Brian Rogers on product photography. So we're gonna be talking a lot about product photography on our YouTube channel and on fstoppers.com for the next few weeks and months. Now, every time Brian takes one of these incredible pictures, he has to use the pen tool and cut out that product so that he can edit the product independently from the background. It's a very time consuming process. Now, if your goal is to only capture one picture and it's supposed to be this incredible hero shot, that's probably the best way to do it. But if you're a product photographer who's taking tons and tons of pictures and you need a faster way, this might be the answer for you. This system is made by Hensel, and we've actually been sent one of their lights before when we did a post on the bullet time photo shoot where we actually tried to capture a bullet with a flash. This system is interesting because it comes with this radio trigger called the free mask. And basically what this does, it's really, really simple. It sets two different channels and you have lights on your subject or on the product itself, and then you have a light or multiple lights on the background. The first shot that it's going to take is going to be with the background lights only. So ideally you're going to have a pure white background and a pure black object. And then the second shot that it's going to take is going to be with the background lights off and the subject lit up. Now to get your camera to take two pictures as quickly as possible, we set ours to continuous shooting high. And then we went into the menu, turned on bracketing to two shots and we set the second bracketing shot to be one third stop higher or lower. It doesn't really matter. Our camera's going to be set to manual anyway. So now all we have to do is frame up the shot, hold the button down, the camera will snap two shots super quickly. And then when we get back into post, we'll have two different shots to work with and we can combine them together to create that perfect mask, hopefully almost automatically. Let me show you how this works. So we have four of these lights and what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be lighting this Nikon D850 here with three of them. And then we have one light that's behind you guys that's going to be lighting up the white psych wall. Now, our key light is going to be this small soft box that we have here. And then we have two lights that have reflector dishes in the back that are gonna be lighting the camera from each side. Normally I would be much closer to the psych wall itself but because we need separation and when that backlight fires, we don't want any of the light to bleed on the subject itself. We've pulled everything really far away from where we would normally be shooting in the studio. So the goal here is very simple. We're going to take one shot, but the camera is actually gonna take two because we have it set to bracketing. In the first shot, we're just going to be lighting with the background light. So it's just gonna be a pure white background, hopefully on a totally black camera. And then very quickly after that, it's going to take another shot where the background light does not fire at all and then the three lights that we have set to the camera will fire. Let's give it a try. Perfect. All right, guys, so I'm here in Photoshop and I've got the two shots of the camera. You can see this is the silhouette, obviously, and then here's the lit shot of the camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to uh, hit Control A to select all of this, Control C to copy it, and I'm going to Control V to paste it on top of the other one so you can see that we have two layers here. I'm then going to go to channels over here. Now with all of the channels selected, I'm going to hit control L to bring up the levels. And first I'm gonna click the white eyedropper and I'm gonna pick an area down here where I can see just a little bit of detail. And you can see that's going to uh, brighten it up just a little bit. I'm gonna grab the black eyedropper and I could just click up here. And as you can see that that's going to make a better mask. Um, they actually suggest that you don't do that and instead you pick like a dark area of the object itself and then grab here and put 20 in. It's two ways to do kind of the same thing. All right, we're gonna click this little button down here that says uh, load channel as selection and you can see that it uh, creates a highlight around the entire thing. And then I am going to create a mask by clicking this button and I'll just rename this mask and that means it will permanently be saved there. I'm going to click down here, and that is going to load a selection. I'm going to go to Select Inverse, and now you can see it's got the camera selected. And then I'm gonna go back over to Layers, click on the background layer, and then I'm going to click the Create a Mask button down here, or Add Layer Mask, and you can see that it cuts the camera out. 
Now, if we zoom in here, you will notice there's some problems. Like there's there was a reflection on the front element here that we can actually see through uh, to the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab a uh, paintbrush, choose white, and as you can see, I have my mask selected over here and I can just paint that out. You can also see that we have some bleeding going on in the top of this lens hood. It was reflecting off the back of the uh, psych wall back there. So again, I can just kind of fill this in. And you may want a little bit of reflection to show up depending on what background you put back there. So you may not want to go all the way. What I'm actually going to do is uh, feather this a little bit and we'll just do a little bit of it like that. All right, and we'll back up. Now I can put this on any background I want. So if we just wanted to do a simple white background, I could create a, a new layer here. So I'm gonna click on the paint bucket over here and uh, let's just fill this in with white in the back and then I can drag it below. As you can see, this doesn't look great as it is. So let's try to add some sort of gradient to it and see what that looks like. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new layer and make this one white as well so you can, you won't be able to see through it. And then we can just mess with the gradient a little bit. Now, obviously, guys, this isn't the most impressive final shot. If you're, if you're wanting to take, like, hero shots, this probably isn't the way to do it. But if you're the type of photographer who's shooting tons and tons of products, you need to shoot them as quickly as possible and cut them out as quickly as possible, this is the way to do it. Because once you get everything dialed in, you can just swap the products out, and this whole process is very quick. All right, so we're going to take the camera out. We will put in this random dead plant that we found in our office. And let's take this out. And we have this incredible Office Depot tape dispenser. Now this is one of Mike Kelly's pictures. It's okay, but I think it's clear to see that it's a little sparse. Now that we've got this gorgeous plant cut out, let's just drop it right here and put it right on this desk. Incredible. And let's go ahead and fix this other shot while we're at it. We'll just drag this, get it to a realistic size, and uh, love it. Now, let's take this one a step further. I'm going to uh, paint this mask and we'll just feather this gorgeous reflection. Amazing. Now, if you're like a power user and you're gonna be shooting hundreds or thousands of products, you're probably going to want to buy some software that's going to automate the entire process for you. This software by Picture Instruments is called Mask Integrator. And basically, this is going to automate the process in Photoshop. But if you're like me or the average photographer and you're just doing this occasionally, it's probably not worth the money. Now, you may be wondering if you can use this with people. And so I took a shot here of myself looking incredibly serious. I've gone ahead and cut myself out. Let's drag it over into this incredible location with the tape and see what it looks like. Amazing, amazing technology. Now, if you start zooming in to my hair, it's doing an okay job. It's certainly not great, but you could go in here and refine the edge and feather the edge a little bit more than it is. The issue with this though, is that I was sitting very, very still for this shot. If there's any movement in your subject at all, the mask is going to be off and you're going to be losing tons of hair, or maybe be eating into the side of your subject's head or something. So for those reasons, I think it would be better to stick with green screen if you're going to be shooting people. Now, the main question that you guys might have right now is, well, what makes this so special and why can't I do this with my own lights? And that's absolutely true. You could set another light in the background on a separate channel and you would just manually have to turn that on and off. So you'd turn off channel one that's lighting your, your product, turn on channel two and you'd get that shot with the nice white background as well. That's a very good point. However, 
if you're the very specialized photographer that's shooting for catalogs or shooting products in the studio all day, every day, and you just need a fast way to knock these shots out as quickly as possible, this might be the easiest solution for you. I love the fact that it's pretty much automated and then you can just hold the button down on the camera and it automatically takes two shots. It is much faster than having to remember to do it each time, turning channels on and off, switching back and forth. You're definitely bound to make a mistake if you try to do it on your own hour after hour after hour. So can I recommend this product to the average photographer? Absolutely not. This is super specialized stuff here. These lights are fantastic and they're gonna work with any type of photography that you do, but the free mask trigger itself is so specialized and even though I sometimes do shoot product photography, I'm not going to be shooting hundreds of products in a day and chances are I'm just going to be trying to get that one perfect shot. So if you're anything like me and you're just trying to get that one perfect shot and you have all the time in the world to make it as good as possible, it's really not a big deal to dial this all in manually with whatever triggers and flashes you currently have or you can just do it the good old fashioned way with the pen tool and a lot of patience. And I think with that method, you're probably going to still get the most precise mask. <music> Thank you.